I'm Pankaj Rai and in this video I'm going to talk about Kotlin flow. This video is mainly focused on how to get started with flow and what is flow. So let's start with what is flow. As the name suggests, flow is for the asynchronous flow of data. Where one of the advantage which comes with flow is like we have one side which is continuously emitting the data and other side which is collecting the data. So if there is no one to collect the data, the flow doesn't emit the result, which means that they are cold stream. Unlike the hot stream where they just keep on emitting the content, either there is any collector or observer attached to it. Here, until and unless there is someone who is collecting the information, flow will not emit the result. And let's see how we can use it in our project. So if you are using coroutines, then you can take advantage of flow because there is no separate library for this. The moment you add code in core library, you get the flow dependencies also. Now let's see how can we use it. So if you remember based on my previous tutorial videos, like with coroutines, we need to have a coroutine builders. And inside coroutine builders, we write all our code and that creates coroutine for us. Same here also, we have flow builder. Say that I have a function called as generate numbers and what I could do is like I can use a flow generator. So they are nothing but the flow builders and inside this I can emit any value. So this is the way to create the flow and emit the values. So flow builder and inside this you can call any suspending function. Now this is something to emit the result. Now how to get it? To get the result because this is the part of suspending function. So this has to be called from either suspending function or from another court in builder. So if I try to call collect to not allow me. That's all because collect is again a suspending function. So let's do one thing. Let me use lifecycle scope dot launch and now inside this let me get the numbers. So this is the place which is emitting the result and this is the place where we are collecting it. Now I'm writing it in a single file. It does mean it has to be there in the single file itself. You can write it in say the repository and then can return the flow of whatever it is either int, boolean, your own model classes and just call collect. That's it. Or even you could use dot as live data to convert it to the live data streams. But one question which comes by default here is like we have live data then what's the point of using flow? Because if you observe then with live data also we can pass a stream of data. As you send the data, if there is any active observer, it gives the content on the screen. Then what's the difference between live data and flow? So the major difference is life cycle awareness. Flow doesn't understand about the life cycle, unlike live data, which means that even though activity is not in resumed state and if you have an observer by using this dot collect then there could be probability that you may make your app to crash. That's all because it doesn't understand about the life cycle. Uh, another difference here is like inside flow you can call any suspending function and also you can do context switch right from flow. So we can also do context switch like I don't want this part to get executed in the main thread. I want all those calculations to be done in the background thread. So it is possible to do it right from the flow. Whereas with live data that's not supported because live data is a data holder and flow is like a generator for emitting the continuous stream of data. Okay, now let's dive a bit deeper into flow. Now this is really a basic concept where we have flow builder and set it I'm emitting one value as 10. And for time being let me print it. 
let me print it like log flow value is it so now this is not the original use case for flow because this is just one value emission when do it is useful so it is useful when we are having a synchronous flow of data which means we need to have multiple set of data or if we are having a network call then based on network call we want to feed in the results so or we want to like broadcast something where we need to pass a stream of data so all those places flow is really useful so now let me do one thing instead of emitting 10 let me run a for loop let me emit the number so one way how flow is different than collection is like for collection it will run through all this 100 time and then it will give the result to us but here with flow for every iteration we are emitting the value which means that for every num change this is going to get called because we are emitting the result so this is where we call this is like the stream of data and let me do one thing let me run this log cat so this was the old result where i was emitting value 10 now let me do one thing let me run once again and now you'll see a value printed from 1 to 100 so not just this because by default it's taking the main thread so this is also getting executed on the main thread so if i want to switch to the background thread then let's see how we can do it so here it is this is normal for loop which is running and emitting the value every time and collect is collecting the value and as i said that flow or cold stream which means that if i remove this then you will not see any values here because this whole part will not execute so until and unless you are collecting the value flow builder will not execute this lambda part and here it is nothing on the screen okay now let me do one thing let me switch to the background thread say if i'm doing some heavy operation i want this to run in the background thread then how can i do it so i could use flow on dispatches.io so now this part will execute in the background thread and collect will be in the foreground thread. and not just this just like the stream apis where we can have filter then dot map for each those things we have it here also okay here it is you can see this is as the default dispatcher worker thread which is this part that's all because of flow on dispatcher.io so how about if i intentionally add delay say that instead of giving the value as it is i want this to get delayed by 100 milliseconds and let me also show you the time that it's taking so by this way i'm going to measure the time that's going to take and let's print the time at the bottom so intentionally i'm adding a delay and so this should take somewhere around 10000 milliseconds because this is getting delayed for every 100 milliseconds for every number and then i'll also add delay here delay of say 200 milliseconds and here this the total time took was around 11636 so here we have a bit of problem the problem is like by default the behavior is delay for 100 millisecond and then again 
delay for 200 milliseconds then print the value once we have collected the result then only this part will execute that's the default behavior so until and unless i collect the value that means this part gets executed this will not run once again so we want the execution to begin as early as possible without waiting for collect to collect the values and then start executing the flow builder part then what should we do is like we can call something as buffer so here you could see this without buffer when i have added 100 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds the total time execution was 22101 now when i have added buffer so this time will come down why is that so with buffer it's not going to wait until the value is been collected here rather flow will keep on generating the value and buffer will store it and whenever collect is ready it will collect the value so that's it in this video where i have talked about what is flow how to get started with it how to switch between the foreground thread to background thread and if you have liked this video then do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe this channel so that you'll not miss the upcoming video where i'll talk about how we can use flow in the projects so thank you and stay tuned